Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick to the video, we're going to be talking about more Summit Ridge leaks. Just to clarify, Summit Ridge, of course, is the AM4 desktop platform for AMD's upcoming next generation processors, Zen. So I think it's fair to say that 2016 has been a pretty darn splendid year for technology enthusiasts. And if you are looking for a new processor, in other words, Zen or perhaps Kaby Lake, then you've been in particular luck over the past couple of months because an absolute deluge of information has been released about across both processors. Some of it official, some of it, well, not so official. Uh, this is also an article, incidentally. You can find it linked in the video description along with a previous set of rumours that we're going to be discussing in this very video. You'll probably be familiar with i3, i5s and i7s. Basically, they represent the performance grade of the CPU. So, for example, i3 is not as fast as i5, and i7s are, well, the creme de la creme. AMD supposedly are going to be doing something very similar. Now, a leak which has popped up on Chip Hell, which is a Chinese website, so most of the text you're going to need to translate, but you can certainly get the gist of things. Now, in this, they call it Zen SR7, SR5 and finally SR3. I can imagine that SR in this in, in, in this instance, excuse me, would probably represent Summit Ridge. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Now, Intel, of course, are pretty happy to segment their processors like this, but there have been some confusing changes in the processor lineup and I have mentioned this a couple of times over where sometimes you'll have an i7 which has, for the sake of argument, more processor cores um, or, for example, it might have uh, particularly odd instances where you can, for example, get dual-core i7s which do have hyper-threading but to the common person, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, I mean someone who's not particularly interested in technology but they just have a passing understanding of what you know i7s are better than i5s, it can be a bit confusing and so you need to do that little bit of extra research. Now it's unknown whether AMD are going to segment their processors in such a manner, however it's fairly logical that we're going to see SR3 as low end and once again SR7 as the high end because of some more information that we have. So, Zen is going to be first being released on SR7, and it represents the high end. Now, this also means that AMD will be having their partners, so that would be the MSIs, that would be the Asus, Sears, and so on, release the X370. Just by the by, the X370 is the absolute high end. It's aimed at enthusiasts. So it's basically for overclockers and tweakers. In AMD's own words, it is for overclockers and tweakers who need robust platforms with comprehensive, low-level control and ultimate graphics card bandwidth. Essentially, it's going to offer things such as Overclocking Plus, which I can imagine is fine grain control, so maybe perhaps better voltage control, perhaps even more granular voltage control, so perhaps more subtle um, shades of voltage, if you will. So perhaps it allows you to dial in voltages a little more finely than, let's say, the B350, which is the mainstream variant. And also you've got the option for 2 times 16 either Crossfire or SLI, depending on whether you're going with AMD's own brand or NVIDIA. Now, it is worth noting that you can theoretically see some versions of the X370 run more lanes. In other words, it could perhaps have three full PCIe slots, but this will require the vendor to add this in through a PLX chip. The downside of this, naturally, is that it's going to cost more money for that extra hardware to be bol basically bolted onto the board, and one can imagine that this is going to be perhaps something that the vendor themselves are going to use to segment their board and act as basically a little bit of an extra marketing ploy for the, for the bleeding edge. Now, what's really cool about this, or not so cool, is that these rumours also tell us that the AMD coolers themselves can handle up to 140 watts. Now, you might be scratching your head a bit on that one, because from what we've heard, 95 watts is the TDP of the processors. So that doesn't add up. There's about, well, 50-odd, well, 55 uh, watts 
of energies which are going missing. So what's going on? Well, do remember, there have been some rumours that tell us that AMD are going to be offering a couple of versions of Zen. Uh, this is besides the SR3, SR5 and 7, but there was also going to be a very high-end, enthusiast-grade SR7. Now, this SR7 is going to essentially run at higher clocks and also going to offer further overclocking headroom. This also brings us to some other rumours, which I covered a few days ago. Now, I won't go into all of those because, well, it was quite a lengthy read. Um, it will be added as a link in the video description. But, suffice to say, there was a couple of rumours. One, Zen currently, back, well, I say currently, it was back in August, so a little while ago, was running at 4.2 gigahertz and could run up to 1.5 volts on an AIO. Now it could clock to 5 gigahertz, but that's on LN2, which obviously is not really inside the the uh, the mainstream sector at all. However, for world records, that type of thing, I can imagine it would be something you, perhaps you would have in your arsenal. But and this once again is the the uh, big you know the big word. Voltage scaling at the moment is not great. This basically means that, for the sake of argument, say that the chips, just to make it easy, we're using 4 gigahertz. And let's say, for the sake of argument, it uses the default voltage of 1.3 to get to 4 gigahertz. Supposedly, back in August, it was running at 3.8 standard. But whether that's going to be the same for retail, we don't know if it's going to be. But let's say, for the sake of argument, 1.3 gets you once again um, 4 gigahertz max well it might be that you need 1.4 gigahertz to even be able to get 4.3 or 4.4 and you might need 5 gig uh, 1.5 volts to get you to let's say the 5 mark whereas from what these rumors tell us this is going to be at least somewhat improved in the final variant of the processor so theoretically 1.4 volts might get you a higher clock speed, but obviously that's something that AMD are working on internally. Another rumour, and this is another thing that I covered a couple of days ago, is that the chips themselves are not fully formed, and there are some error issues, but one of the big problems is the memory itself is only capable of running up to 2133 MHz. And I can imagine in some applications which are very multi-thread orientated, let's say blender that type of thing where obviously memory bandwidth is a really big deal i can imagine that that is definitely impacting the performance and hamstringing the processor somewhat finally we have information on pricing now pricing is a bit of a strange one it's currently settling at around the 220 us dollar price which is actually not too bad but do remember it's starting at that price so more likely that this is going to be the equivalent of the SR3s. So how much the final SR7s are going to cost, well, we just don't know. Some rumours had picked the processors to be actually fairly reasonable, around the 3 to 350, which are some of the rumours I covered the other day. However, those prices also most likely are not final. So your guess is as good as mine whether we're going to see the processors at let's say equivalent pricing or not now logically Intel are obviously the bigger company and therefore it is down to AMD to tell us as customers hey there's a reason to purchase us as above Intel and this reason could be anything it could be better pricing it could be better performance it could be a greater number of cores for the same cost my guess is AMD judging from the information I have and this is not exactly technical but you can probably follow my logic from all of the information we have the CPU Zen is roughly on par with the Haswell E slash Skylake give or take a few percent here or there it's possible it might be a little faster perhaps slightly faster than Skylake maybe almost as fast as KB if they can sort out the memory controller issues and a few other bits and bobs and you know, but this, this, for the sake of this video, say it's about on par with Haswell E slash Skylake. Well, if they can achieve similar-ish clocks, that means they can't beat Intel in clock speed. They cannot beat Intel on single slash um, multi-thread performance. 
in terms of you know IPC, in other words, instruction per clock. So in other words, a four gigahertz Zen is going to roughly perform the same as a four gigahertz. Uh, let's say, for the sake of argument, 6700 with the same number of cores and the same number of threads. So the only thing left for them to compete on, well, two things. One is either the pricing, in other words, comparatively better performance or the same performance for less money, or to offer a greater number of processor cores for the equivalent amount of cash. If you were to mosey on over to Amazon, or if you're pretty familiar with the pricing of, let's say, for the sake of argument, the current Skylake lineup, you'll be intimately familiar with the cost of um, the i5s and the i7s, the 6600K, the 6700K, which of course will be replaced next year. Logically, therefore, we can start making an assumption that AMD will want to, at the very, very least, have a four core part, which is going to be, of course, the i3s, oh, sorry, the SR3s, uh, which is going to be four core with hyper threading or rather SMT. And that will be the low end, and that theoretically will be a roughly, at least roughly the same price as the i5. And if they can continue to do that all throughout their lineup, then they could definitely have a pretty compa uh, compelling part. Let's just see, though, shall we? It's really going to come down to motherboard pricing, processor pricing, and everything else. Theoretically, I can definitely see how AMD are going to have a very compelling. Um, platform and it's going to be very interesting because naturally you've also got Vega coming out and God knows when Vega is going to be released obviously it's going to be some point at well you know first half next year is what we're hearing let's just wait anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now if you could do the normal like share subscribe I'd greatly appreciate it bye